إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله رب العالمين الذي خلقنا فأحسن صورنا ورزقنا من الطيبات وفضلنا على كثير ممن خلق نحمده سبحانه وتعالى على نعمائه ونسأله المزيد وأصلي وأسلم على سيدنا محمد خير البشر اللهم إنا نشهدك أنه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد فيك حق جهاده اللهم فجزه عنا خير ما جزيت نبيا عن امته اما بعد اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل واحثكم على ذكره وعبادته واذكركم بقوله تعالى يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم ان زلزله الساعه شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد. I begin my khutbah reminding you and myself of the saying of Allah in the Quran, O oh people, be conscious of Allah. Have taqwa of Allah, be conscious of Allah, for the shaking of the hour is severe. The day you witness it, a feeding mother will not pay attention to her own suckling baby. And everything that is pregnant will be caused to miscarry. And you look at people on that day and they look at you as if they are drunk. And they are not drunk. But the penalty of Allah is severe. A reminder we are asked to remind each other of every Friday. To have consciousness of Allah to be mindful of the day of judgment and so that is the purpose of our existence that is the goal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have set up for us God consciousness is the one thing that ensures that you stay on the right and narrow in a world that is filled with temptations with difficulties with problems God consciousness is what keeps you focused and keeps you prepared for that day, the day of judgment. But alhamdulillah, that's not the only thing. The Prophet Sallallahu if we are to follow his guidance, and he has urged us, and the Quran has urged us to follow his guidance, has provided us with instructions that are far more direct. And I wanted to share with you one of those instructions or one of those hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi has, has instructed us with that really points to an area of deficiency many times with believers in general. So when you talk about faith, you're talking about perhaps something that is philosophical, something that you ponder, something that is in your heart, something that you believe in, and that's all good and well. And that is definitely a stage that one must reach before they can have faith in, in their heart. So when you talk about what is a mu'min, you talk about the belief in Allah, His messengers, His books, the day of judgment, the angels, etc. You talk about Islam, you talk about five pillars that one observes. But then, many times people have that, yet they manage to lead lives that are pretty far from what they profess. Thinking that once I have that faith, once I reasoned, thought, learned, and profess that faith that's good and well, and that's what's gonna make me survive on the day of judgment. In fact, other faiths fall exactly into that, where it says, believe in this concept, believe that, you know, this one thing, and then you are saved. And as if the Prophet Sallallahu anticipating that kind of thinking, seeping into the minds and the actions of Muslims, he gave us this hadith to keep us alert. To, to make us realize that, yes, Islam and the five pillars are needed, but it's a starting point. And Iman and faith is something that each one of us have to have in their heart. 
but also it has to be cemented by action. And so one day he is sitting with his Sahaba as he did Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always. And he, as it is his habit, challenged them to thinking a bit, where he presented a concept and redefined it for them. So he said, Atadruna manil muflis? Do you know who is the bankrupt? The Sahaba responded, having heard the phrase, the, st the, the word, being familiar with it in their, in their general uh, practice, they said, Al Muflisu minna ya Rasulullah, man la dirham lahu wa la dinar. O Prophet of Allah, a bankrupt person among us, in our definition, is a person who has no money, has no dirham, no dinar, no cents, no dollars. Al Muflisu minna man la dirham lahu wa la dinar. The Prophet Sallallahu responded and said, Al Muflisu min ummati rajulun. The bankrupt in my ummah. So he redefined the term. And he re redefined it in terms of Muslim ummah, in terms of the, of the faith. He said, Al Muflisu min ummati, the bankrupt in my ummah, a rajulun yati yawm al qiyama, a person that comes on the day of judgment. Bisalatin, wa siyamin, wa hajjan. Listen to that. He says, He comes on the day of judgment with prayer with fasting, with hajj, with zakah. So he has fulfilled that person or she, have fulfilled what they thought is required of them as Muslims, and rightly so. So they come on the day of judgment, perhaps even proud of all of that. Then he said, وَيَأْتِي وَقَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا وَقَذَفَ هَذَا وَأَكَلَ مَالَ هَذَا وَسَفَكَ دَمَ هَذَا وَضَرَبَ هَذَا فَيَأْخُذُ هَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ حَتَّى إِذَا فَنِيَتْ حَسَنَاتُهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَقْضِي مَا عَلَيْهِ أُخِذَ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ فَطُرِحَتْ عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ طُرِحَ فِي النَّارِ So the Prophet said, the bankrupt in my ummah is a person who comes on the day of judgment with fasting, prayer, fasting, zakat, hajj, but then comes having cursed this person and having accused falsely this person and having cheated that person out of money and having spelled the blood of someone, assaulted someone and having hit someone. So that one person, the first person takes out of their hasanat, of their good deeds, and the next person takes out of their good deeds, and the next person takes out of their good deeds, until if he is done with all the good deeds he has before he has paid back everything he owes, then their sayyat, their bad deed will be taken from them, dumped on him, turihat, dumped on him, thumma turiha finnar, then he gets dumped into hellfire. Think about that. It's like someone trying to fill a tank of water, right? It doesn't matter how fast and how much water they dump into the tank. If there's a hole that is letting the water out faster than the water coming in, at the end of the day, that person will never fill that tank. And this is something for us people who profess faith is very important. It's not only the pronouncement, it is also the consequences. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, by the way, says in another hadith, ittaqil maharim takun a'bad nas That avoid forbiddance or wrongdoing, you will be the best of worshippers. Imagine, ittaqil maharim is, is, a, is a negative concept, meaning avoid wrongdoing, avoid mistakes, avoid haram, avoid wrongdoing. That's what ittaqil maharim means. What did he say? Takun a'bad nas In our mind, when we think about someone who's a abid, who's a worshiper, we think someone who is praying and fasting and doing all those proactive, positive going forward things. Yet the Prophet ﷺ defined being the best of worshippers in avoiding. It's almost the, the, the concept that we have in the English language, first do no harm. That's the first thing. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying, if, if you avoid, so, so, 
theoretically, you could say that which is better for you to come on the day of judgment with a lot of good deeds, having harmed a lot more people, or to come with very little good deeds, but having made sure you don't harm anybody. I submit to you based on what I understand and read, it is the second, it is the latter. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, for example, says that that the ones among you who are the best of you and nearer to me or nearest to me on the day of judgment are the ones who are best in moral character. Think about that. This is not some philosopher saying that. This is the Prophet who brought us the very worship and rituals of our religion that it says you have to pray five times a day. Then he says, but the best among you and the nearest to me on the day of judgment are the ones who have good moral character. Because someone with a good moral character is not going to do al-maharim, hurt people. Come on the day of judgment having hurt this person and cheated that person and, and cursed that person where they take out of their hasanat. So it's really a redefinition that we have to have in our heart. A redefinition of what does it mean to be faithful Muslim. It is believing in the five pillars and practicing them, yes. It is believing in Allah and the Day of Judgment, yes. But more importantly, it is then to have our actions in consistency with that and not do other things that are contradictory to them where we go on the Day of Judgment and we have an empty faith that does not help us. So much so that if you look at the Quran, it even defines theological concepts in terms of action. The Prophet ﷺ does so also in other ahadith. So for example, when I ask you who's a Muslim, you'll tell me the one who does the five pillars of Islam. Well, the Prophet ﷺ did teach us that, true. But he also in one of the hadith said, Al-Muslimu man salima al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadih. That a Muslim is a person who other Muslims can feel safe from his tongue or her tongue and their hand. Doesn't hurt anybody verbally or physically. So it's a, another practical definition of Islam, of what does it mean to be a Muslim. He defines Iman in the same manner, in, in, in that he says in the very same hadith, وَالْمُؤْمِنُوا مَنْ أَمِنَهُ النَّاسُ عَلَىٰ أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ And that a believer is someone who other people can feel safe about them, their money with them and their selves, their, their physical well-being. And the Quran takes it a step further. In Surah Al-Ma'un, for example, in Surah Al-Ma'un, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the, the, the surah with the question, or an exclamation. Do you see not to the one that rejects faith? Very theological question. Now you and I, when I talk about, when I ask you, when you ask the average Muslim who rejects faith, they start talking philosophically. Someone who doesn't believe in the existence of God, someone who associates others with God, someone, all true. But look how the surah pursued that. It said, Ara'ayta ladhi yukadhibu biddin, do you see not to the one who rejects faith? Fadalika ladhi yadu'u al-yateem. It is he who is hurtful to or pushes away or is, is injurious to the orphan. He didn't talk about theology. He didn't talk about believing in God and the hereafter and the unseen. He said, do you see not to the one who rejects faith? It is the one who hurts the orphan. And does not agitate for the feeding of the needy. He didn't say, wala yushajju. He said, It means it's an agitating thing within him that he agitates others to do. Agitates. Does everything in their power to feed the needy. That's how we should understand our faith. Not only it is a pronouncement of words and philosophical concepts that we present, but also, first and foremost, it is part of our action. So we may, insha'Allah ta'ala, be prepared on that day of judgment to stand before Allah and be held accountable and be proud of what we have done in this world. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu fa ya fawz al-mustaghfirin astaghfirullah.
الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما امر واشكره وهو الذي وعد المزيد لمن شكر عباد الله ان الله امركم بامر عميم بدا به بنفسه وثنى بملائكه قدسه فقال تعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد it is important for us to not only understand those concepts in our religion that islam is a faith and action a lot of empty talk is not sufficient it's necessary precondition but it is not sufficient. It has to be paired with action. That's why every time in the Quran, every time, just about, not every time, I would be lying if I said that, just about every time, 99% of the time, Iman or faith is mentioned in the Quran, or the believers, the faithful are mentioned, it is followed by Al Amal al Salih. True? Inna ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Al ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Verse after verse after verse, it pairs together as if to tell us as Muslims that your faith is yours. And your faith, if it is not put into action, if it does not translate in your actions, it means nothing. And that's something that we really have to, if we have not thought about in the past, we need to. But more importantly, we need to instill it in our next generation, in our children. Instill in them is that ours is a faith of words and action. And the consistency between the words and the actions matter. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, lima taquluna ma la taf'alun? Why do you say what you do not? Then he says, kabura maqtan indallahi, an taqulu ma la taf'alun. That it is a big abomination in the sight of Allah that you say what you do not. It is faith and action. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will enable us to pair those two in our lives, instill it in our children. I am visiting you from Chicago. My name is Safa Zarzur. I am the chairman of the Council of Islamic Schools of North America. I'm part of the ISNA Education, West Coast ISNA Education Forum, a forum that started 17 years ago in Chicago uh, as a nationwide, but we felt that there's enough educators in the West Coast that need to be exposed to the work of that council that we started five years ago with the help of some of the brothers and sisters, educators in, in the West Coast, in, in Southern and North California, Northern California, uh, started that program and it is going on uh, very nearby in, in uh, Newport Beach, uh, Radisson. Uh, inshallah, I hope and pray that many of you, especially those who are educators, would join us there and those who uh, uh, wish to know more about it can go to the ISNA website, isna.net, inshallah. Also, the chairman of the board of this masjid, who I thank and thank the board members and, and the imam for allowing me this opportunity, is going to, inshallah, be doing very important announcements after the khutbah. Let's end our khutbah, inshallah, with the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Friday is a blessed day in it. There's a blessed hour that anyone who happens to be making supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would be answered most surely. And this is one of those times, inshallah. Allahumma ya man la yaruddu sa'ilah wa la yukhayyibu lil'abdi wa sa'ilah دعوناك وأنت أكرم مسؤول أن تغفر اللهم ذنوبنا أن تجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين اللهم يا رب اهدنا لما اختلف فيه من الحق اللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات اللهم اهد شبابنا وبناتنا وأبنائنا وأهلنا اللهم يا رب وارحمنا وارحمهم جميعا يا رب العالمين O oh Allah, we ask you that you purify our hearts. You make us better Muslims. O oh Allah, we ask you that you make us among those who profess faith and do good deeds. 
We ask you that you guide us and guide our children and our families, our young people. Oh Allah, we ask you that when we meet you on the day of judgment, you will be happy with us, satisfied with us, and we will be satisfied with you. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon aqimis salah.